chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, and behind me are some of the members of the House Freedom Caucus. Um, recently, the House Freedom Caucus took an official position and broadcasted out to oppose H.R. 5. The so-called Equality Bill has often been referred to by its critics, and rightly so, as the Inequality Bill. It is H.R. 5, a remnant from the scrap heap of failed legislation from yesteryear. And while it attacks religious freedom, freedom of expression, and freedom of, so of association, all important rights recognized in the First Amendment, it doesn't stop there. It also denies the biological facts that men and women are the two genders. The bill recklessly requires girls in women's restrooms, lockers, gym, or any place a female might seek privacy to surrender that privacy to biological males. Women's sports are already being infiltrated. In the end, however, H.R. 5 is about more than the abrogation of our rights and our dignity. It is to further the far-left goal of control by the government over every aspect of our lives. This bill is another test of whether Americans are prepared to acquiesce to the authoritarian tyranny that Democrats are seeking to wield. H.R. 5, with its familiar marketing adroitness of a comforting title, is really a devastating attack on humanity, and it is an effort to expand government power. It is consistent with this administration's record-setting number of executive orders, contrary to what then-candidate Biden promised. It, fail, it falls in line with the attempt to centralize control of American elections in swampy Washington, D.C., to be manipulated and controlled by swamp monsters. It is in harmony with a land grab of more than 1.5 million acres, a thousand miles of rivers, and prevention of development in H.R. 803. And H.R. 5 works well with the attempts from the leftists in Congress to remove Fox, Newsmax, and OANN from cable distribution. And it resonates with a crowd that desires to censor and silence all who dissent and oppose the leftist orthodoxy on social media platforms. In short, while the substance of H.R. 5 is in and of itself so egregiously bad as to justify a no vote, it is also a type of the congeries of malevolent legislation that the left is pushing to change the foundation of America's greatness, which is built upon individual choice and accountability and to forever alter our future, so that the collective is placed above the individual, and we slouch to ignominious mediocrity and poverty of soul and spirit. There is no justification to support H.R. 5. Thank you for being with us today. Some of our members are going to speak to you, and then we'll take three or four questions when they're done. I now throw it over to my friend and colleague from Arizona, the Honorable Debbie Lesko. Thank you, Andy, and thank you for being here today. I'm Congresswoman Debbie Lesko from the great state of Arizona, and I stand here as a woman strongly opposed to the so-called Equality Act, the Democrat bill that will effectively outlaw private facilities for women and girls. So there will be no privacy or safety in bathrooms, locker rooms, showers, because this bill requires, under penalty of federal law, for schools, any facility that's open to the public will require, under penalty of federal law, that you take in biological males who identify as women and put them right next to the girls and the women in the showers, the lock ro locker rooms, and bathrooms. This is an evasion of women and girls' privacy and rights. Unfortunately and outrageously, this bill would also require, under penalty of federal law, that women domestic violence shelters that are reserved just for women would now have to accept males biological males who say they are women. There is no deadline or no doctor's order. There's nothing like that. Anyone who identifies as a woman would be let in. As a survivor of domestic violence, this outrages me. This bill also takes away 
the protections against taxpayer funding for abortions and would also allow and encourage taxpayer funding for abortions up through the entire nine months. This bill is not about equality. This bill discriminates against women. And with that, I turn it over to Lauren Boebert. Thank you very much to my friend and colleague from Arizona, Representative Lesko. I assure you today that privacy is not the only right this so-called Equality Act, this Inequality Act, will take a blow at. As the mom of four boys, I am raising my boys to be men, and I am darn proud of that. As a parent, I rely on friends, family, and faith to guide me in raising my children. You know who I don't need in helping me with my parental decisions? I do not need the help of the United States federal government. Congress is replacing mom and dad with bureaucrats. Under HR 5, parents who choose not to subject their child to puberty blocking drugs, cross sex hormones, they could have their children removed from their custody. Under this legislation, making that rational decision not to inject your child with these drugs and blockers, which can lead to brain damage, sterilization, and increased risk of cancer is considered child abuse. Is that really where we've come to? Under this Democrat regime, which controls Congress, the arrogance of the radical left will lead them to try to regulate and control every aspect of your life, including how you gender your children. Is Kamala Harris going to apologize to the girl who will lose her athletic scholarship to the boy who outplays her? Will Joe Biden tell the parents of the girl who gets her skull crushed how fair that is? And will Nancy Pelosi please explain to our daughters why boys pretending to be girls are leering at them in the girls' locker room? When we say the left is unhinged, this is exactly what we are talking about. This is a sad day for women's rights here in the United States of America. It is a disgrace. It is disgusting. And it's downright dangerous. This, bed, this bill is bad for female athletes. It's bad for doctors and patients. It's bad for teachers, business owners, and for parents who want to raise their children free from government overreach. Democrats see the mass exodus from blue states to red states, and they are desperately trying to expand their destructive policies to the federal government from which no one who lives in our country can escape. I am proud to stand with the Freedom Caucus today in opposition of this res resolution. I am proud to stand with women in the United States of America. And for that, with that, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Congressman Roy. Well, great job, uh, Lauren. Thank you for that. Great job, Debbie. Um, I'm really, really proud today to be associated with this group. It's the House Freedom Caucus. We're standing in front of an institution, the United States Congress, which is fundamentally broken to its core. It is no longer representing the values of the American people. It is no longer doing what it is called to do to secure the blessings of liberty as is outlined in the Constitution of the United States, but rather this body being led by Democrats is trampling on the rights of the American people in the name of equality, in the false name of equality. The Declaration is clear. All men are created equal endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But go government is instituted among men to what? Secure those rights. Look around. This is about power, ladies and gentlemen. 
And you in the media should be as concerned about this as anyone else. It is your job to hold government accountable and get information to the public to know what's really going on. And look around. Look at the fences. Look at the razor wire. This isn't a free society. This is a government using its power to tell us to bow down to the will of a cultural elite in this town who want to tell us what we're supposed to believe. We're not going to do that. Let me be clear. We are not going to do that. My wife and I work very hard. Products of the public school system, K through law school, both of us, to scrape and save to pay our kids to go to a private Christian school. Why? Because we're being pushed into the corner so that we can carry out our beliefs without penalty, ostracization that this body now wants to do, the Speaker Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and the Democrat leaders want to do. We're not going to be painted in the corner because this is about tyranny over the mind of men. Famous quote by Thomas Jefferson. That is what this is about. We're going to oppose this bill. We're going to fight this bill in the Senate. But it be perfectly clear, if you pass this legislation, it is not with the consent of the governed. That is what the Declaration of Independence talks about, is the consent of the governed. And if you don't have it, then the law has no force. Because it has to come from the consent of the governed. And they are trampling it, and they are ripping apart this country by its threads. Our federalist system allows us to agree to disagree. And we should be able to do that. But if this Democratic Congress, and if the Democratic leadership, and if this White House continues to trample the rights of the people of the United States, then it is they who will be destroying this union. It is they who will have to look in the mirror and say that they ripped this republic apart for their kids and grandkids. I'm proud to stand with this group. We'll oppose this legislation, but we're going to keep fighting it in the courts and beyond. But most importantly, through free will as American citizens and our right to live free and to alter this government as necessary if they continue to trample our rights. I'll now turn it over to my colleague, Ms. Green from Georgia. What are we doing, America? That's my question. This is a country that was founded by brave people seeking religious freedom, demanding that they're able to protect their Second Amendment rights, creating a country where they could run their businesses and not be overtaxed by a tyrannical government. But now we find ourselves in a time where Democrats are running, indeed, a tyrannical Congress and federal government under Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, and the rest of the woke Democrats that now are defying science, defying God's creation, and only care about governing over people's feelings. You see, the Equality Act is a completely evil, disgusting, immoral bill. It's not about stopping discrimination. It is creating it. It's creating discrimination against every single woman and girl in this country. Over the past century, our great-grandmothers, our grandmothers, our mothers fought for women's rights. And the Equality Act with a single vote wipes it out. Every single person should be outraged at this bill. You should be angered. You should be concerned for the safety of all the little girls that are going to go in a bathroom not knowing if there is a man in there that calls himself a woman. You should be angered for every girl that competes in sports like my daughter, who we traveled the country with for 10 years so she could earn her scholarship to be a D1 collegiate athlete and compete in sports. Boys that want to call themselves girls do not belong in my daughter's bathrooms in my daughter's locker rooms, on my daughter's playing field, traveling with her team where she's forced to share a hotel room with them? No. They don't belong. They should get their own sport. Or they should compete with the rest of the biological males, which is what they are. Women should not be forced to have to be in prison with a man in a cell that calls himself a woman 
or a battered women's shelter where they've been beaten by men and then they have to be in there with a man who calls himself a woman. Women should not have to be in drug rehab centers with men who call themselves women. I'm sorry, it's not about their feelings. We have to govern in what's right and wrong, not about people's feelings. This is what's wrong with America today. The Equality Act is completely wrong. Doctors didn't go to medical school for years and years to be forced to perform abortions or mastectomies on teenage girls that are confused and want their breasts removed. They should be able to say no to that. Churches should be able to have their religious freedom. Mosques should be able to keep men and women separate how they choose because of their religious freedom. The Equality Act wipes that out. You see, no one's talking about all of the consequences that come with the Equality Act, but they're very real. All you have to do is read the text to the bill, which the Democrats lie and tell you that it won't destroy religious freedoms and it won't destroy women's rights. Media, I dare you to print the text of H.R. 5, the Equality Act. I dare you to do it. Put the truth out there. That's your job. And you should be very offended by the Democrats. You may not like the views of Fox News or One American News or Newsmax, but you should be very concerned when people in Congress are trying to get rid of colleagues of yours. That's a violation of freedom of press. Everyone in this country should be concerned when the federal government thinks they can grab as much land as they want. And every single taxpayer in this country should be mortified at a bill a $1.9 trillion bill that less than 9% goes to COVID relief when over 100,000 100, small businesses have been destroyed and children's lives and educations are being ruined. Shame on America. This is devastating. So I'm, I'm very happy to come here with my colleagues, people that truly care about right and wrong. We need to govern on what is right, defending our freedoms, and not about people's feelings. Thank you. I turn this over to Congressman Jody Heiss. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm Jody Heiss from Georgia's 10th mm -hmm. Congressional District, and I likewise am honored to stand with my colleagues here, the warriors, to stand up. Look, at the end of the day, this is a battle over freedoms. It's a battle mm -hmm. over liberty. It's a battle over the, that which the Constitution both recognizes and guarantees us, and those rights must be defended each and every day. And I'm honored to stand with this group that's willing to do that. These freedoms, these liberties came, came to us at a great cost. Our national ancestors gave it to us with the shedding of their blood, with the cost and the sacrifice of their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honors, and then they passed those freedoms to us. And it is now our duty to defend those freedoms and to pass them on to the next generation. But tyranny is entering into the scenario right now. And it's a, a tyrannical motivation, the, the purpose of which is to take those freedoms away from us. And what a human disaster it would be if those freedoms are taken from us without even a struggle, without a fight. Or even worse, for those freedoms to deceptively be stolen from us without Congress having the discernment to recognize the, discern, the, the deception and to stand in the gap in behalf of the American people. And that's what we're doing today. The deceptive bill called the Equality Act, anything but equality. As a pastor for some 25 years uh, and, and someone who's been an advocate on the forefront of the, of the pro-life movement for uh, every bit of that much time. I am offended. I am appalled. I am at, I'm outraged with what's in this bill as it relates to the, the issues already brought up, but specifically I'll mention the pro-life issues. Oh, th this bill forces, it will force people to violate their beliefs in order to accommodate the expansion of uh, abortion access and taxpayer funded abortion. It will force, it will require medical professionals and hospitals to uh, provide abortion services even if it goes against their deeply held religious beliefs. 
This is an outrage. And as it relates to religious liberties, it is equally devastating, and I'm convinced this is the tip of the iceberg of what will happen if this bill ever passes. But houses of worship, uh, uh, nonprofit organizations, religious schools, a variety of entities along these lines will be forced to surrender their beliefs in order to accommodate that which this tyrannical government is forcing upon them. And this is absolutely unacceptable. It's already been stated, but I'll just close with this. This, this bill has nothing to do with equality. It has nothing to do with stopping discrimination. We already have laws in those regards. This bill is all about control. It is about this government telling you what you shall believe and how you are to act in accordance with their radical, left-wing, immoral policies being crammed down our throats. And we cannot let that happen. That's what we're here to do today to stand in the gap in behalf of our liberties and the American people. And with that, it's my honor now to turn this over to Mary Miller. Thank you. Good morning. This so-called Equality Act is nothing but the progressive left in this country attempting to force their radical views about marriage and gender on the rest of us. While they claim to be equal and inclusive, the group that they are not including are those of us, the majority of Americans, that hold to traditional American values and traditional values about marriage and traditional and scientific fact about gender. This bill is neither safe nor fair for women or our girls, and the consequences are broad, far-reaching, and egregious. One of the areas that this will affect is faith-based adoption agencies. Mm -hmm. They will either be forced to abandon their beliefs or to shut down. Yes. Now, in a day when we have so many children needing homes, we know that the majority of adoptions are in Christian homes. We will be shutting down these faith-based agencies. The family the traditional American family is a foundation of our country's stability and our society. And this bill will egregiously attempt to further tear it down. I am the mom of seven and the grandma of 17. I have seven granddaughters. What are we leaving our children? They will not even recognize our country. I agree. I support my colleagues. Highly oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I'm Randy Weber from Texas, and uh, this bill smacks a whole lot of what Obama's policy was, former President Obama, when he tried to put transgender bathrooms into place. You all remember that. Uh, what happened in Texas in a package store was a young girl in the bathroom who was followed by a man who self-identified that day as a female. I'll talk about that more. This bill, H.R. 5, the so-called Equality Act, this legislation seeks to cut, modify, modify the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And although it's called the Equality Act, this, the policies in, in this bill will do a lot more than create quote-unquote equality. I'm telling you, inequality will be the order of the day. That will be the order of the day. The Equality Act would erode religious freedom. It expressly exempts itself from the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, we call REFRA, our flagship religious liberty legislation that received strong bipartisan support when it was passed. REFRA, and it, by the way, it was signed into law by President Bill Clinton. RIFRA provides protections for religious freedom against federal government infringement in the most robust way stating that the government must show a compelling government interest, a compelling government interest that is advanced in the least restrictive manner in order to infringe on any, any sincerely held religious beliefs. If the Equality Act is passed, individuals with religious views 
disfavored by this bill will not have RIFRA as protection against that kind of government tyranny, against that kind of government infringement. H.R. 5 would politicize the medical profession to the detriment of patients and practitioners. You've heard this from my colleagues. Under H.R. 5, moral or medical opinions objecting to assisting individuals in certain procedures based on, on sincerely held religious beliefs are ignored and that practitioner can be charged with a, with a crime. Under this bill, H.R. 5 is radically pro-abortion. Radically pro-abortion. The Equality Act would create a legislative right to abortion on demand, a way of redefining sex to include pregnancy. Which makes me kind of wonder how, I mean, how does a woman get pregnant if it's not through sex? I'm just asking, you know. It redefines it to enhance abortion on demand. When it comes to the services or treatments provided to a pregnant woman, this is, this is madness. In some, the refusal to perform an abortion could be considered discriminatory, and that medical practitioner could be charged with a crime under this law. H.R. 5 will, would be detrimental to women's equality. It's just that simple. You've heard from our, our lady colleagues, our female colleagues, you've heard that from them. Biological males would be allowed to compete in women's sports. Women across this country ought to be up in arms about this. They ought to be going crazy over this. And I want to repeat one of my colleagues' exhortations to the media. Print this bill. Print this bill. Get it out there in the public. So I've listed a few issues with the bill, but the truth is there's so many bad, so much bad stuff in there, we couldn't, I could be here all day. I'm going to vote against this bill because it will mandate anti-life, anti-family, and anti-faith on all Americans. Now let me ask you this. If America is not about life, faith, and family, what is it? Remember the young girl in the package store in Texas that was followed into a bathroom that by some male who said he self-identified as a female that day? Turns out his teeth were knocked out by the girl's father who self-identified as the tooth fairy that day. I yield back. Louis, Louis Gomer. Thank you. Look, um, you don't have to take our word for telling you what's in it. Let me just read this from page 25 of the bill. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993 shall not provide a claim concerning or a defense to a claim under a covered title or provide a basis for challenging the application or enforcement of a covered title in this bill. So, what's worse, it doesn't mention what it eviscerates, really, and that is the First Amendment. And if you're going to eliminate the first blessing of freedom, liberty, in the Bill of Rights, you think the press is going to, should expect to keep their freedom much longer. Oh no, you got a taste of that, but hardly anybody printed it in mainstream media. But the Obama administration went after and got warrants and started spying on reporters. And it wasn't just a Fox News reporter. This is where it's going. But what this bill says is, We've got some some far left, alt left, socialist, totalitarian, Orwellian people in Washington that are telling you they know better than Moses. They know better than Jesus, who quoted Moses verbatim on what marriage was. They know more than Muhammad. They are so much smarter, you're going to have to put aside thousands of years of religious beliefs that have worked with a family as a nucleus and a building block of society. You're going to have to get rid of that. Well, how much good did it do for the African American community when the so-called war on poverty actually was a war 
on African American nuclear families. This just totally guts thousands of years of religious beliefs that have worked. Who do we think we are? I'm telling you, they're probably apparently going to get it through the House, but the Senate has got to stand up Amen. because this will mean the end of America as we've known it. And all these people that have said they were such strong women's rights advocates, if you're not standing against this bill, then clearly you don't care about the decades of progress that have been made toward women's rights. I don't know who, what party she's affiliated with, probably was a Democrat, testified before our committee that she got one of the very first group of Title IX scholarships. What a great day for women that was. And she had a chart that had three red dots with all these hundreds or thousands of blue dots above it. And she said those three red dots represent the three fastest times of women in the last Olympics. I think it was the 400 meter. The blue dots, all of these blue dots that are faster times are men and a large part of those she said are really second tier men athletes we were ridiculed by democrats who said oh no no man would ever say he was a woman just to get money or scholarships or notoriety no i'm sure no man would ever act like he was a woman to get into a lifeboat on the Titanic either. I don't know what's wrong with these people's thinking process, but if they will read the Bill of Rights, they'll get the message if they'll really pay attention. But this, as has been said, it's about power. Yep. Yes. And they're going to shut down every good, wonderful Catholic charity that's been doing work to help people that needed it, and especially women that needed the help. They're going to shut down all these Christian adoption agencies because they can't let the government tell them to disregard their religious beliefs. This is about power, saying we don't want nor need any Christian, Muslim, Jewish believing organizations we will tell you what your religious beliefs are. Go read 1984. I just recently reread it again. This is fascism at its worst, and it's coming not to a home near you, to your home. We got to stand against it. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Uh, now, Yvette Harrell from New Mexico. Pause, please. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today. The Equality Act is truly a radical proposal that would change how Americans raise their families and serve their communities. It moves our nation away from our Judeo-Christian values and takes away parents' rights to decide. The bill would define the word sex in federal law to include pregnancy, gender identity, and sexual orientation. This is an attack on our parental choice and the family unit. The Equality Act would put parental rights to make decisions about their own children and medical treatment and education at risk. Any parent that does not want their child to go through gender reassignment surgery at a young and vulnerable age would be st stigmatized and there is a risk that their child could be take taken away or the life-altering surgery would be done with or without the parental consent. Think about that for a minute. This is a disgrace and an overreach on the family unit and the way that we raise our children. This diminishes the ability of parents to raise their children and pass on their values. It has Washington DC and Nancy Pelosi and the ultimate to decide ultimately the morality of our children and our churches. I ran on a pro-God and pro-family platform. I'm not going to back away from that and neither are my peers because there are some things more important than politics. 
and it's called the right to worship. It's called our families and our family values. That's what's at stake right now. Restricting such accommodations, including, uh, including at public schools, gyms, as well as homeless or domestic violence shelters, would be discrimination under federal law. The bill goes and cut, the bill guts congressional protection for religious liberty, including the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which requires that laws placing a substantial board burden on free exercise of religious of religion and must serve a compelling government interest and be least restrictive means of achieving that interest. Meaning our pastors are going to be hamstrung. Meaning our outreach, our missions are going to be hamstrung. Meaning we are not going to be free to do the things that we choose to do as Christians. Without this protection, houses of worship and religiously affiliated schools, hospitals, nonprofits, and other entities will be forced to act contrary to their beliefs or stop offering certain services to the public. That's a shame to hamstring our churches in such a manner. The Equality Act would force health care providers to reform abortions and gender transition surgeries against their deeply held religious beliefs. It would likewise force both people and organizations in many everyday life and work settings to speak or act in support of gender transitions, including health care workers and licensed counselors, even when it's against their professional judgment. I will oppose this bill, and I will stand and fight for American values, because that's what's missing in Washington, D.C., our moral compass and our family values. We're putting politics over people, and it has to stop. This bill cannot go on. Thanks so much for you, your attention. You've heard from the House Freedom Caucus members, uh, some of them very passionate, very factual. We have time for maybe a couple questions. No, we are, we're going to fight the earmarks because what it does is it will lead to corruption, it will lead to empowerment of the, of the uh, leadership, and it will uh, denude the power of, of the, the members as we try to represent our constituency. So we will fight to make sure that our constituents are taken care of, but we're not going to let it be subject to the trading and the corruption that has existed in the past when we've had earmarks. Other questions? Yes, Well, everybody in this group is going to want to talk and answer that question, I'm sure. I'm going to be brief so I can pass it along to a few others. That was one of the most outrageous statements, but it's consistent with four, at least four other statements she's made in the last few weeks. Um, as you know, some of us in this group led a charge to remove uh, uh, Ch uh, Ms. Cheney as the chairwoman uh, leader of the uh, Republican Conference. I do not believe she is able to carry that out any further. I also think she's absolutely devoid of any kind of political reading of what's going on in the Republican Party in this country. Right now, in my state, for instance, Donald Trump, were he to run again, would win the primary with something like 78 to 80 percent of the vote. That's where he stands. If there's, if there's no room in the party for Donald Trump, my guess is uh, there's probably no room in the party for somebody who takes the positions that Ms. Cheney does of, uh, and the, makes the accusations that she does. She should step down. If she had any sense of shame, she would step down. And I know that Mr. Roy wishes to, to, to add on to my, my comments. You know, I, I consider Liz a friend. Um, and I stood on the floor with the conference defending her right to defend herself in taking what she described was a vote of conscience. Um, I believe that's important. And so I did so. Yesterday, Liz forfeited her right to be chair of the Republican conference. 
You cannot stand up and make a statement that is so completely out of step with the Republican conference and where the American people who support President Trump are. I think it is unfortunate that she made those remarks. I think it was short-sighted, but I also think it was purposeful, and I think that's the problem. And I think that it is time for us to have another conversation about the leadership of the Republican conference with respect to what... um, Congresswoman Cheney, who again, I consider a friend, uh, said she shouldn't have said that. She did so purposely, and she did so in a way that directly undermined the conference that she leads. She did so leaving the conference meeting that she had just chaired. When our minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, had just answered the question about CPAC, and then she got the question. She said, well, that should be up to CPAC, but then paused and then launched into a diatribe about the future of where we should go with respect to President Trump, completely unnecessarily, but purposefully, having just left the very Republican conference where we were together, and in a way that is in complete opposition to where the majority of the Republican conference and the majority of Republicans are. So I think we need to have that conversation going forward. Yeah, one, one more statement, and yeah. then we'll take one last question. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to be very uh, brutally honest about this. Liz Cheney and any other uh, Republican that wants to make statements against President Donald J. Trump is a fool. They are disconnected with the base. They're disconnected with Republican voters. Uh, Liz Cheney was censured in her state. Adam Kinzinger has been censured. Many of these Republicans that are turning their back on Trump, who they ran on his coattails, have really lost themselves. They don't represent Republicans. They don't represent Republican voters. And the people are speaking out, and they know it. They're feeling the heat, and this is it's, it's going too far. The Republican Party would be much better off with people that want to move on past 75 million Republican voters that voted for President Trump. And I can't wait for his speech at CPAC on Sunday. It's, it's going to be great. It really is. It's going to be good to hear from him again because he's been canceled. And that's wrong. Everyone in this country should be against people being canceled. But, you know, the left is okay with it as long as it fits their politics and fits their narratives. But you're not going to cancel President Trump. We'll be happily hearing from him on Sunday. And you're not going to cancel the American people. One, one last question. Show, right? mm-hmm. Is there any bill perspective of transgender rights that you could support? Is the problem that this is that we're not going to deal in hypothetical questions. We're dealing with the piece of crap before us. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. All right, we're done. Thanks so much for being here. Good job, Andy.